a very good morning uh, the topic for today's lecture is case selection and the principles of endodontic treatment uh, this is something very very important that you do the right case selection and then accordingly you do a treatment planning so what is the first and the foremost step in this the first step is the diagnosis your diagnosis should be very very thorough and it has also been said that over diagnosing is better than doing a over treatment so always make sure that you make a thorough uh, diagnosis and then accordingly you take a particular case and plan a treatment so the clinician must determine whether the patient's oral health needs are best met by providing the endodontic treatment or and that means you are maintaining the tooth or by advising the extraction so you have to decide between the two things whether to save the tooth by the endodontic therapy or just advise the extractions and how you will decide all this uh, yeah one more thing before that that it is like if the patient comes to you with the already treated tooth the endodontic treated tooth so in that case also there is a possibility that you can save the tooth by providing the retreatment but that can be surgically done or non surgically so this is what you have to decide whether you have to do the treatment or not then earlier when there were not many facilities were available the armamentarium was not available the uh, extraction was preferred but nowadays with a lot of skills the armamentarium good technology available the preferred uh, treatment is to save the tooth by doing the endodontic therapy but yes it is not always possible in all the cases that you can just save the tooth so you have to determine what has to be done so there are certain considerations which you have to look for before starting the therapy that is first and the foremost is the tooth needed or important for example if we talk about the third molar most of the time the third molars are advised for the extraction but sometimes we have to decide if the tooth is strategic or not that is it holds important position in the oral cavity that means the tooth can serve as a abutment for the prosthesis so in that case you have to determine the importance and accordingly you have to decide whether to save or go for extraction then is the tooth salvageable that is you have to definitely check for the restorability without uh, like if you just do a good endo uh, endo treatment but if you cannot restore the tooth then there is no point doing the treatment then uh, you have to check the status of the entire dentition that again almost the same that you have to look for the role of the tooth that is going to play in the oral cavity Uh, yeah the tooth serving aesthetically that is again very very important the aesthetics because uh, whenever the patient comes to you it is always the first priority is the function and aesthetics as well because if you are not providing the aesthetics and the patient is not happy with the treatment even if you do the best of the treatment then also it is not considered completely successful so that also has to be taken into consideration then uh, and the next is the periodontal condition yes very very important um best of the treatment you you, uh, you give but if the adjacent periodontium is not sufficient to support the tooth then your tooth uh, or your treatment will be a failure so uh, we have to consider various factors which will help on help us in determining uh, or doing a case selection so the factors you have to consider are the factors which are associated with the patient's health patient's tooth and the clinician so uh, moving on to the first factors that is associated with the patient's health uh, so for that the first and the foremost thing is that you have to take a thorough medical history that is mandatory whatever case you are taking the medical history is a must and what all you will uh, ask when you take a medical history like you have to ask for the history of drug interactions uh, because uh, if patient is taking any particular drug and if you prescribe some other drug so there could be adverse effects so you have to ask that then if the patient has any kind of anxiety episodes in the past so you have to take care of that then the presence of prosthetic valves joints stents pacemakers this again is very important because uh, though nowadays they do not interfere but yes if you are using certain uh, things like if you are taking a working lead with uh, with the electronic apex locator so there is like sometimes the pacemakers can interfere especially nowadays the pacemakers which are designed they are compatible but earlier they were not so you have to take care then required antibiotics uh, in certain cases you definitely need prophylactic or therapeutic antibiotics so that has to be taken care then hemostasis yes bleeding disorders are again very important then uh, providing the anesthesia with or without vasoconstrictors because uh, patients like hypertensive patients with thyroid diseases they there also you have to ch take care whether you can give the vasoconstrictors or not then patients having history of allergies again if you're prescribing any drugs so there can be some interactions 
then equipment concerns as i mentioned uh, with the uh, valves and pacemakers also the radiographs especially in uh, pregnant ladies so you have to take care of that also then uh, yes emergencies so it is not just that you should be prepared for your treatment you should be always prepared for any kind of emergency which can occur that could be because of the medical condition of the patient for example diabetes uh, they can have um, uh, hypoglycemic they can so sometimes turn hypoglycemic because of the medicines they are taking then um, hypertensive patients uh, they can go into syncope because of the increased anxiety levels so asthmatic patients can have the asthmatic attack so you have to be prepared for these emergency conditions and this you will be prepared only once you will take the proper thorough medical history <clears throat> uh, yes, the most medical conditions do not contraindicate the treatment. It is like in most of the medical conditions, the endodontic treatment can be given. But what you have to do is you have to modify your treatment plan. Uh, it could be modification in the treatment planning, that is timing, the type of treatment you are giving, the type of drugs you will be prescribing. So that modification is required. <clears throat> and yes, it is also very important that you need to communicate with the patient's physician, especially the patients uh, uh, like cardiovascular patients. It is important that you make sure that you are taking the consent from the treating physician. Even the patients who are undergoing dialysis, that means renal disorders, patients like on chemotherapy, radiotherapy. So there also you have to take uh, consent from the treating physicians or the doctor specialists. <clears throat> So uh, first we talk about the cardiovascular disorder. In this, the patients definitely are more vulnerable for the emotional stra stress or uh, the anxiety episodes can occur. So in such patients, as I mentioned, the physician uh, consent is mandatory. Then you have you can uh, delay the treatment in cases where there is like cases like myocard uh, myocardial infection within six months. The patient has undergone any coronary bypass graft surgery less than three months or has a history of stroke for less than six months. So in these cases, antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended. Why? To prevent the bacterial endocarditis. This is very, very important. Then pregnancy. Pregnancy is definitely not a contraindication, but yes, you have to be careful with the radiographs. So you have to make sure if, if at all it has to be done, uh, you uh, should use a lead apron, thyroid collar, that is mandatory. And then uh, the type of drugs you are prescribing, that also has to be taken concern. Uh, uh, you have to be uh, very sh uh, careful about that. So these are the various drugs which can be used during the pregnancies. These are the safe drugs. Then uh, second trimester is considered as the safest time where you can go for the treatment. Or uh, for most of the significant surgical procedure, they are avoided till the delivery. <clears throat> oh, but definitely you can do the emergency pr procedures taking care of all the factors. Then diabetes. Uh, diabetes definitely doesn't uh, cause any kind of contraindication but yes you have to uh, remember this because of the diabetes the healing is compromised so certain these patients can come up with the flare-ups very very common the flare uh, the flare-ups uh, episodes are very common in diabetic patients so you have to be aware of that and prepared for that <clears throat> Now these were the factors with the patient's health. There are other factors also, but these are the most common situations which can occur. So we discuss that. Now factors associated with the tooth. So for uh, examining the tooth, you have to do a thorough clinical examination and a radiographic examination. That is very, very important. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you have to check for the periodontium. If there is insufficient periodontal uh, support, then it is advisable that you prefer a extraction rather than doing an endodontic therapy. Because even if you provide the best of the treatment, the tooth is not going to remain in the oral cavity for long. So that is one factor you have to look for. Then endoperial lesions, again, for the endoperial lesions, if you just do the endodontic treatment, it is not suffice because you have to take care of the periodontium and for that the simultaneous periodontal therapy is also mandatory. Improper positioning of the tooth, yes, the tooths which are malpositioned, impacted or partially erupted, they make the treatment difficult. So you have to determine whether to go for the treatment or it would be best to advise the extraction. Then non-restorable, if there is no restorability, no point doing a treatment. Abnormal canal configurations, if there is a like severely dilacerated uh, root. So these uh, factors can sometimes pose the difficulty in treating the case. So you have to determine, again, extraction or saving the tooth. 
developmental anomalies definitely they make the uh, endodontic treatment very difficult so again you might advise extraction in such cases in calcification of canal calcification is definitely not a contraindication but you need to be very very careful with the skill you have to identify a calcified canal and then you need to have the armamentarium otherwise what will happen if you'll just jump to do the treatment yes uh, i'll do something heroic or something that is not gonna solve because in uh, these cases you can land up in <coughs> iatrogenic errors like the uh, uh, perforation, the ledges, and a number of things can occur. So you have to be a little careful. <clears throat> that is selected judiciously. <clears throat> Crown root ratio, again, the unfavorable uh, ratio that exceeds 1 is to 1 is more susceptible to eccentric occlusal forces. So ideal is 2 is to 3. But if it is uh, 1 is to 1 or less than that, then uh, you sh uh, if it exceeds 1 is to 1, then you should not go for it. The nitrogenic error, the separation of the instruments or the uh, uh, ledges, perforation. So again, you have to be careful. And the factors associated with the clinician, the last one, that is you should have the best of the skill, the armamentarium and the setup. And not just for the regular treatment, but also be prepared for the emergencies. So these are the factors which help you data in the case selection and accordingly do a best of the treatment planning. That's all for today's lecture. Thank you.